on this first part, I just wanted to document what everything looks like on top of this record changer assembly. You can see it's pretty grody. All these wires are all beat up, nasty. And I just wanted a good set of shots so I knew exactly how everything fit together. So now I'm going to go ahead and rebuild and this whole record chamber assembly, starting out with just cleaning everything in sight. So my world tour has a total number of plays played counter on it and you know I think it's something like 90,000 plays something like that I don't know how many this has but I haven't seen a counter maybe maybe it doesn't have one for total plays ever I'll have to look um, I always thought that was kind of crazy though the 90 thousand plays and I did a little math on that trying to figure out how much that is and obviously you got to just estimate because how many people put it in with five quarter or with a quarter rather than a nickel or a dime um, if it's nickel or dime obviously it's five cents but if it was quarter you could have had five plays for that uh, so I think I figured it out just sort of making some estimates and it was somewhere around I don't know, $12,000 or something like that in, in plays. I should go back and look at that little notepad I have before I quote that. But I thought that was kind of fun. And really, um, for that much use, the world sort of did not have that much damage to it or, or wear on it. It's more, it seems to have more gears than this one has. This one um, is actually probably a little better thought out. It's two years newer than the Wurlitzer, and it just seems like they maybe made some smarter ideas in, on design. Wurlitzer has this giant wheel, and it's called a selector wheel, and it kind of runs everything. And, and I'm telling you, it is complicated in there, really complicated, where so far this looks like a much better design. As far as just maybe not looking kind of as cool as when it, it plays, because when that Wurlitzer goes, it really makes a statement. I'll have to put that into the video. But um, when this goes, it's um, to me, it's a little more simpler, and I think probably would last the test of time a little better than it than the Wurlitzer. But Nonetheless, the Wurlitzer was built with some really heavy-duty components. All the, all the gearing in it has these giant gears, and they all are really, really tough. And they look like the old tractor gears that we used to work on when I was a kid. For a while, we lived on a farm, and, um, and all of that stuff was so heavy. You know, the farming equipment has to be really tough. And I felt like the Wurlitzer stuff was that tough. All right, we're getting pretty close now. At least, dear Lou, I just found some really nasty parts. Starting in the switch frag and get those on the side there. Let's get this. Maybe one more with paper towel. Really make sure I have all that junk up. During this whole thing, my wife does not like to go in the garage because it always smells like tobacco for the first few weeks while I'm getting all the components wiped down. And um, I don't know if it's because when I was growing up, my dad smoked, and so I kind of got a little less um, affected by it or more used to it. Um, but what it is, so she never was around that, so it really bothers her. Her nose is really sensitive to it. And I don't like it, but it doesn't, it doesn't bother me as much. I'm going to say I have to get this on here and clean it up a little bit.
Well, one thing is your toothbrush, your old toothbrushes are your best friend here. Um, if you have one of these and a little crud cutter, you can get just about anything off. So save those old toothbrushes because you won't want to use one that you are normally brushing your teeth with, that's for sure. But yeah, these are great for getting this nasty mess off. Well, it looks like that's going to be it for today. Tomorrow, I'll go ahead and st start rerouting new cabling in here, and then we'll get the mechanism on there, cleaning that up, and start uh, hooking it all together. All right. Thanks for watching. One more thing before I call it quits for the night. I wanted to mark the junction box here, and it's the this is actually turned around, so one, two, three, and four. When I turn it around, it turns into ones on the right. So I have car the carriage. So this first assembly is for the carriage. And the next one is for the bale switches. So those are the two switches, this one and this one. Uh, the next one is for the uh, motor assembly. And the third one is a power connector in. So those are what those four are. And I'll know how to do that later. Well, I have a new plan, plan 6B here. Um, anyway, new plan, and I think I'm going to take this assembly apart some so I can really clean it, and I can understand how these wires that got cut really lead into the overall unit. So um, before I go ahead and put mount the new ones on there, I really want to see how long they need to be and what they connect up to, and I want to get all the, you know, junk on this off. You see it's yellowed like everything else. I bet you that once I do this, it's a nice, beautiful plate underneath. And you see all this. This should be as gray as this plate, I think. So probably everything was that brown before this cleanup started. Some of it, I think I said, was done by the prior owner, but he didn't quite get done with all of it. So, all right, so I'm going to do that now. Here we go.
Okay, well, I've got all of the vacuuming done, so that kind of took care of some of the uh, junk that was on there on top. Now I've really got to get a good layer of crud cutter on this, and we'll get this looking just as good as this gray base looks right now. You know, I was thinking about why do I like these jukeboxes so much? You know, some projects that I would do that you know, I'm just not that interested in. Um, you know, I wouldn't mind building a old motorcycle or obviously old cars. I want to get an old truck at some point, like a Model A truck. Build that up. Um, and, you know, some other little things. I built a acoustic guitar, I'd like to build a maybe ukulele and um, electric guitar, things like that, very interesting, but you know, there's other things I just have no interest in whatsoever, some woodworking projects and stuff like that, just, and there's something that I, I can't quite put my finger on yet about why I like these projects so much, maybe because these are combinations of mechanical, like really cool mechanical working, electronics, which I think is really interesting, and, and electronics that I can understand. You don't have to have, you know, understanding of microprocessors and everything. This is still old enough that you can get it buy with a, a good basic double E knowledge. You don't need to have too much knowledge on how all the transistors and everything work. Um, and then also it has that, I don't know, sublime quality of music. You know, you just, where do you get all three put together? And this, this is one of them. And it's so neat how it works and that it's so robust. They built them, both this one and the Wurlitzer are just built tough and that's so kind of fun to come across things that aren't just cheap plastic pieces that they really had some thought put into it, like some real engineering. That's exciting. So that was just a deep thought I wanted to lay on you. I guess what I hope is that this series will get people interested in maybe, I don't know, finding a jukebox of their own and that needs some love and cleaning it up and fixing the electronics of it and either selling it or putting it in their basement and having a really cool collector's item that not too many people have and that's always interesting. You know, I tell you, everybody wants to see how this works and they want to tear out the back panel so they can see the, the working behind the scenes. And yeah, it's a good half hour of everybody who walks in wants to know, how does that thing work? And uh, just a fun thing to have around the house. So, you know, hopefully this will inspire you guys to find one on Craigslist or the marketplace and snack, snap it up. I wish that I could better tell you the different models that I would want. I know a few of them. Um, I, I really like the AMIs. And there's an um, AMI-C that I think is really handsome, although I don't know that other people like it as much. Of course, everybody likes the late 40s bubblers. You can find one of those, but those guys are expensive. Um, and an I think the E-Series, unless you have the F-Series. F-Series isn't as interesting down underneath. But um, the EMF series are pretty neat. EMI and EMF series. Uh, maybe you can read in your comments what you like. Um, the Seabird is pretty neat. Jukebox. But I don't know too much about it, actually.
Here's that counter, so you can see, whoop, 50,398 is the number. And as the arm cycles down on each play, it will press down on this, whoop, and give us another number. There it goes. So now it's 50,399. So really, one too many. To be real. Anyway, here we go. So I'm just going to put that back on there before I forget how it goes on. And we're getting pretty close now. This thing is starting to look pretty good. One thing that's nice about all the gunk that's on this machine is it shows you right where you're screw was before you took it off, you know exactly where you need to tighten that thing back up. All right, beautiful. Okay, so that is ready, and I'll start maybe one last cleaning of everything. Oh, and I need a little bit more in this area, and then I'll start putting it all back together. Well, I'm still working on this whole assembly, and it's coming together. I'm starting to get the wiring all tuned up and good. Um, I, as you can tell, it's upside down from when we've seen it before. And probably, I don't know, fourth day or so of working on this thing. But this is the heart of the unit, and there's a lot of, a lot of work to get this wiring just right, as you probably figured out if you've done this before. So... Um, let's just look at the wiring real quick. I think I've got it all figured out. There's only one that's really missing. Um, and we'll start with the switches. So there's a left and right switch. And I'm calling a left and right is if uh, originally it would go into the unit like this. And I call this from the left. And there's one right underneath here. I don't know where my finger is. Underneath this assembly. And I call that the right one. But obviously when I switch it around like this, the way I have it set up on my workbench here. It is uh, left's on the right and the right's on the left. But as you see, the line for it comes and joins this loom to the outside. And so it is this one right here. I've got them both together, getting ready to go into the plug. So there's my left, and here's my right, even though that's opposite the way we're looking at it. And the left comes from underneath where this assembly is, joins up with this whole loom, and now it's traveling on the other side of this. So that's why this is kind of funny coming around here, but I think that'll be all right. And it goes, if you remember, to number two. So number two. And if you uh, can see them marked here, there are really small in here, there are little numbers on here. And it's numbered one, two, three, and four in each of the plugs. Well, one and four are for the right hand switch. This one that's underneath the assembly right in here. So just in case you don't have your original or you're working from something that was, you're regenerating this whole thing. One and four are for the right hand side two and three are for the left hand side. So pretty easy to get right here. And what we'll do is we'll take this um, plug, and you can see it's labeled in here too. And if you do this correctly, the little screw hole will be in the back so you don't see the screw. And you just solder up, oops, there we go, you just solder up this little bit of uh, solder on the outside of these wires and they're cut to about three quarters of an inch and then you put them down into the plug on the inside let's see if I can do one of them here I usually do two at a time here and then you just as far as it'll go then you heat it up and it'll eventually just slip on all the way and then you have to do it to the other side at the same time so anyway we'll be doing that today so we can get this plug 
before the switch is done. And then we have to do the same thing. These other two coming in will be for uh, relays and power into this assembly. And then there's a fifth one right down the middle, right here. And I'm gonna make that into my power. So there's just a plug power for this. And I think what they were doing, that this is the spindle that runs the phonograph, actual phonograph assembly. And it looks like, so what'll happen is, when it's way back in the bar and being used, um, even when the um, it wasn't playing, that would be spinning. And I think it's because the, the top of the um, phonograph was sort of uh, sparkly. I can kind of show you here. Let's see, let's go find this thing. So it's in this box here. So you see how it's kind of sparkly. And I think that was spinning to just, it would reflect the light and make people interested in spending money on records so, or, or uh, music. So anyway, that would be spinning even when the, the uh, unit isn't activated. It'd be uh, the secondary lights on and that would be spinning. And so that's why this uh, motor here is on a different power scheme than everything else. Um, and let's see. This is control um, and power from the junction box. So the junction box power comes down and onto this. And then this one controls this motor here. So um, all of it kind of is switched through this little junction. So that's about it. Relatively simple, but um, it's taken a while to kind of figure out how it all works. Um, I should also say that I put, I fit all this together, um, the chain assembly, which drives the sole sled here. I put that all together so I could make sure that I routed this correctly and was not gonna interfere with this, some of the tighter spots. And it works fine, however, um, this is sort of temporary. I'm gonna buy a wire loom. And so they have looms on Amazon for, oh, it probably is gonna cost me 20 bucks for 100 feet of it, um, but it's kind of this mesh, and I'll go over this and then probably clear down into here and stop it in here, and then as far up into this assembly, maybe stopping it right there. So I'm gonna probably use three quarters or one inch mesh to cover this as opposed to these little wire ties, but right now it kind of let me test and make sure the sled went ahead and moved as it's supposed to. So oh, it's getting stuck on this switch under here. that's underneath here. Let's see if I can get that out of the way so you can see. So this is harder than it looks for with one hand. Okay, there we go. So, oh, now it's getting stuck on this. So anyway, this goes a clear over to the end and um, for the most part, that wire seems like it's going to work. Like I say, I think I probably would have done it with 18 gauge rather than 16 gauge if I was going to do it again. That didn't end up being the best call for making it through each one of these, but in the end, it's going to work fine, I think. Anyway, we're making good progress. Um, probably by the end of the night, I'll have all the wiring uh, wired up and I'm going to be doing a few tests. I did run some tests to make sure that all my switches were all set and working. Um, after I do that, then I'm going to go ahead and put the main switches down that are down here uh, for controlling. I'll be putting those in. So we're making some headway here.